Okay, I'm going to do a quick video here. That might be a long one, I don't know. Um, I finally get some time where I'm in a communal living situation, as you can see all the beds. And I don't get a lot of time to shoot video, so I'm going to take advantage of it while everybody's off food shopping and out and about. So I haven't meaning to do this for a while. <clears throat> this is, a, I'm going to do a quick overview of um, electronics for the missions field. So. Anyway, this is kind of an array of some of the stuff. I've tried to lay it all out so that you can get a good look with one view. Um, but let's start at the beginning. First thing you're going to need is power. All right, so what we have here is one of those jump starter packs. Um, these work real well for a couple of reasons. One, this particular model, and there's other ones like it, what they'll have is you'll notice this is a peak jump starter 900 which you'll notice this one has an int, uh, a, a charging jack and what it does is it has an option of either this wall wart for regular 110 power to charge the battery see like so or this type of jack which charges from a car or a 12 volt power source so there's a cigarette lighter like that and it goes in here and charges this battery this battery is enough to charge laptops and, and tablets and run routers and whatnot. Now, uh, when you don't have any power whatsoever, um, this will run a couple of days running the routers and all. But I also have here is a 6 watt 12 volt solar cell. This is semi flexible. This is not the kind you can roll up, but it puts up a little bit of bending and whipping around and is fairly tolerant in my backpack. Um, I'll bring it back for some scale, but you can see a regular size book in front of it, okay? Now, I have this on my list on Amazon. I have a equipment missions list. It's at list.donfinney.com. Um, the way that it comes is a little plastic connector here on the top that hides the wires, which doesn't work very well at all. It breaks off real easily. So I wound the wire back and forth a couple of times and then hit it with hot glue and that holds up a lot better. As you see it has the four grommets and I've got bungees on it already so you can hang it in a tree or off the back of the motorcycle or whatever you need to in order to get your power. The other thing it does is it comes with a, just a regular bare wire and I had to go and just tape one on and I put one of these sockets. This is a regular car lighter socket and I stripped the wires down and hooked it to your solar cell. Now with that connected to the power plug that goes to the battery, that gives you a fairly stable source of power. That six watts in all the time, this of course will put out 900 peak amps, which is more wattage than anything you're gonna use is gonna possibly need at once. Um, so that running all day will usually charge this thing up in full sun if you're not running it down too far. So <clears throat> there's your power. The next big thing, of course, is you know, want mission in missions. A lot of times you're needing um, communications, and that usually uh, translates into Wi-Fi because we're using things like Skype or Google Talk or all these other methods to communicate long distance other than a cell phone because calling internationally on a cell phone gets way too expensive. So this is where Wi-Fi comes in. So what I have here is I have a couple of routers. And this is an Alpha R36, and this is an ASUS WL520C. There's also a, a GC, and there's also a U, and the difference between them is basically um, a USB port on the more expensive model, and um, the, a little bit more memory on the board, if I remember correctly. Um, the big differences here between these two recommended routers that I have, this one, in this one. This one is like normal power, somewhere around 170 milliwatts. And we'll get to watts and milliwatts in a second here. Um, and is about the same as most normal routers. But the plus here is this router can be reprogrammed to run Linux and do tricks like catch Wi Fi and repeat it if it's not too far away. Uh, you can also use it to uh, connect to Wi Fi and in the back here. Um, put it out to Ethernet to other devices. The other big plus here is this plug right here, okay, on, on this model, and on the other model, right next to it here will be a USB plug. Um, take 5 volts in. Now why that's important 
is five volts is what USB puts out. And as you can see here, there's a USB port on my battery pack, but also it's fairly cheap to get these connectors. They go into 12 volt and make five volts. And what's nice about five volts is that a panel that's rated for 12, even in the shade, will put out at least five volts. So I can take that, plug in a USB 12 volt to USB 5 volt connector, and then run the wire from that to this router, and this will be powered from the sun even if it's in the shade, and give me the ability to repeat internet around the campsite. Now this doesn't repeat far, but it does some neat tricks. Uh, the other thing you can do with the more the better model when you hack it and you put DDWRT or a version of Linux on this type of ASUS router with the USB type is you can plug in a USB hard drive. Now that's a one terabyte right there. So that's like bigger than most laptops or similar to a lot of laptops. So it'll uh, hold quite a bit of data. You know, Jesus movies and worship music and PowerPoint presentations and all that stuff can be served from here. So you can get it at from your smartphone or your tablet. Okay. The other thing here that's neat is you notice that all this stuff will run off of starting from 12 volt will we'll run out and run almost everything here on this table. I've got a Kindle, okay, good thing for electronic Bible. I've got all my reference materials because you're not carrying a bunch of books. Although I do, you see I have the DC talk books here. Um, but <clears throat> this has all the different stuff that you could use um, as far as all your reference materials, concordances, all that stuff. And this will run charged off of a USB port, I don't know if you can see that there. The micro, just like you use on a phone, and it'll run three weeks on a charge. Okay. This is a Nexus 7 running Android, and that'll do almost everything you need it to do um, for about eight, 10 hours, also on just one charge, charging off of USB again. All right, so we're pretty low voltage already, okay. Now, if Wi-Fi is a little further away, which it is a lot of times when you're out in the mission field, you're gonna need a way to grab that. So now you look at the more powerful routers, like this Alpha, instead of the, being 170, what it, like this one puts out, this one puts out 500 milliwatts, quite a bit more powerful than a standard router or a laptop. And it has a USB port on it that can go and run a USB high-powered adapter. This is an Alpha, 2,000 milliwatt Wi-Fi adapter. 2,000 milliwatts as opposed to the normal 170. I have it plugged into a 9 dBi antenna. Okay, for comparison, that thing's about as long as your forearm and hand. It's a cubit for those Bible people. That's about a cubit long right there. A standard one, there's a 5 and a 4. DBI antenna. They're small. You see them next to the Altoids 10. They also make a small panel you could screw on. That's 7 DBI. 7, 9, and then finally the monster. This is a Yagi and it is 18 DBI. Okay? Very directional. I was using that the other day. This the other day I was getting Wi-Fi from three miles away. Strong. Um, I'm not in a city, I'm on here in the desert, so I haven't been able to test it as much as I like, but you get a strong signal three, four miles away with that. This tall one right now is pulling Wi-Fi from next door, which is probably 300 yards away running a standard router, okay? And I'm getting, right now, I can see on my little screen here, 71% um, signal. It fluctuates 71 to 80%, and I've got walls and all that to go through to get to it. So that's pretty substantial. It'll probably pull in half mile to a mile without much of a problem, just that one antenna. Now I'm gonna have links to all this stuff in the description and on my website, so that's all there. Um, but just to show you here, the, the Nexus, which is really conservative on battery life, can be hacked and then you can run a thing called a USB on the go adapter. And let's see if I can get it here. There it is. It has USB on one side and a micro USB on the other and allows you to plug in USB devices. Like a USB hub, which has multiple ports, a USB keyboard, right? What I have over here, as you see my little Bluetooth mouse, the combination of that with one of those little cheap plate stands turns this thing into a full-fledged workstation. 
which is pretty decent. Now, I do also have my laptop. However, as you know, most laptops, um, two, three hours is all you're going to get out of them most of the time. If you really stretch them, you can maybe get a little bit more, but that's pretty hard to go past that. Now, one little advantage I found, and I, I recommend it to everybody, I haven't got around to it because I just got this keyboard at Walmart a couple weeks ago, and again, I'm out here in the desert, is to get the bilingual stickers. I use Russian because I do um, a lot of communication to Russia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan. And the reason why I suggest this is, as you'll notice, most of these keyboards now are black, okay? And without a whole lot of extra light, you see how bright those keys are. So in low light conditions and whatnot, it allows you to be able to type, which means you don't have to use your electricity for lighting. You can use it to get work done. Um, same thing with here. You could actually use those same stickers on a USB keyboard and plug it in here and get a good solid eight to 10 hours out of one of these little um, Nexus 7s and be able to do all your communication, make your newsletters, all that kind of stuff, as well as do Skype and conference calling and all that stuff can work off of this. So the last thing, of course, is when you're near power, I like to keep one of these. And this is a, uh, this makes a 12 volt, like a cigarette lighter out of this is 110 but I got the international version I don't know if you can see that here but when you look at the specifications you look at the input and the inputs 100 to 240 and it does 50 or 60 Hertz so it works overseas I plug that into my little adapter and voila I've got 12 volts and everything that you see here can be powered up off of that all of it laptop tablet all that stuff can be powered off of off of this and the wall wart for that as well does the same thing what you want to do is you want to look at the specifications on the back side and find out what voltages it accepts and make sure that it accepts both before you go overseas uh, this of course is my little Bluetooth speaker so I can throw it on the tablet and I can listen to my tunes and praise and worship and stuff and it all works well so that's kind of a general overview um, you're going to probably, most, a lot of these things are cheap. And again, I have prices for a lot of this stuff and where to get it. I'll put in the annotations on the video. Um, I might do a blog entry on this as well. Um, there's also some really cheap solar that you can get as well, like these. These are between $9 and $12. It's a USB, uh, it makes USB power. Um, you can take, it, it'll take the, the solar cell charge two AA batteries and create a uh, USB port and you can use that to charge almost everything. It'll run the, 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 the low powered router but it won't run these. These routers, the big heavy duty ones like this that reach out miles require 12 volts and they can be run off that battery pack. So anyway that's kind of an overview. I, I wish I had um, a little more time and better lighting and better camera equipment but um, hopefully this gets across visually um, what it is that I'm talking about when I'm describing the equipment. I try to put enough things here um, next to uh, the devices for scale. You know what size a mouse is. So you see there's the mouse. There's the Alpha R36 router. There's the Alpha 2000 watt, 2000 milliwatt um, USB transmitter. And this, of course, this transmitter, even without the router, can be run instead of the USB going into the router. I could plug it directly into my laptop. And that would give me quite a bit of reach um, if I didn't need to share it with multiple devices. But I have between the Kindle, the uh, tablet, the laptop, and my smartphone, I have multiple things that can be served well if I just had internet. So I tend to run all of it off that one router. And all these, the little antennas fold back and forth in here, right? So um, it gives you some options. The tall um, omnidirectional antenna has a magnetic mount, so you can stick it on top of a car or side of the refrigerator, whatever it is you're going to do with it. Um, works pretty well. Oh, and the last thing is, is that um, there is a difference between USB to 12 volt adapters. They're not all created equal. This is a nice low profile one with two hubs on it, and this one is a big beefy one um, as far as size. Um, this I think I paid uh, less than a dollar for, and that one was about eight dollars. But the difference is the milliwatt output. And tablets like this usually require about two watts. So do iPads and a lot of heavier smartphones. So sometimes like this little guy here, 
it's not going to charge my, my tablet very well. It will, however, run my router. Um, and it will charge my Kindle. So um, there's other little considerations as well. If you do things like hook up one of these uh, um, external hard drives to your tablet, you're going to want one of these converter cables that has two USBs in to one out, the small one out. And the reason why is there's one that's the data that goes to your device, and then you want to give a little more power to it here. Otherwise, uh, one of these hard drives will suck a tablet or a smart phone down in really short order. But when you root or change the operating system, um, unlock your operating system on an Android device, you can run storage devices and keyboards and all kinds of cool stuff. So it's worth doing, worth researching on the web. But that would be an hour video. So I am not going there today. Um, okay, well, I think that's probably it. There's the basic bare bones of it. Um, you'll find that most of the time when you're in the up mission field, communications starts to become critical. I don't know how many people I've had to rescue um, when I've gone overseas that can't call home and are out of money and can't afford to make a long distance phone call and don't know how the SIM cards work in the phones and everybody they talk to to ask for advice doesn't speak English fluently of course so when they ask them test technical questions like how do I get internet or how do I get on they, they get lost um, so uh, it's good to bring your own um, it's good to have an alternate power source and it's good when everything runs off either 12 volt or USB because you can get 12 volt or USB adapters in every country for every voltage. So 12 volt is the most universal. Every car in the world has 12 volt batteries. Um, they all have the same plug size. There's no problems when you're using all 12 volt. So um, you can always make do with that if need be, as long as there's a vehicles around. If there isn't, um, then you might have to play with the plugs and stuff. And when all else fails, there is solar. So anyway, I'll put, uh, I'll put annotations and uh, start typing all this up here in a moment. But um, I hope that helps. Um, there'll probably be some out there that will be um, needing this information as they're going overseas and going to places where um, there's not a whole lot of connectivity. But what I've found in Eastern Europe and Western Asia anyway, there's Wi-Fi everywhere, but most of the residents don't know how to get to it. So anyway, God bless, and uh, whatever you do when you go out there, don't be careful, be fearless. Uh, Jesus has got your back. Amen.